If you have watched any of my videos, you probably know that I am currently on a quest to hike all the trails in the Great Smoky Mountains National Park and become a member of the 900 Miler Club, which celebrates those who have achieved this goal. In early March, I drove the four plus hours to Rainbow Falls Trailhead, not far from Gatlinburg, Tennessee. From the Rainbow Falls Trailhead, I did a half mile west on the Old Sugarlands Trail. On the Bullhead Trail, I headed south for 6.3 miles, where I gained well over 4,500 feet, continuing 0.5 miles east on Boulevard Trail to reach Myrtle Point before returning 0.4 miles east to reach the LeConte Shelter. On day two, I did a half-mile loop of the Clifftop Trail to end at LeConte Lodge. After that, it was a quick 3.6 miles north on Trillium Gap Trail. From here, a short four-fifths of a mile round trip to the peak on Brushy Mountain, followed by a quick 1.6 miles down to the east and back up on Brushy Mountain Trail. Then 2.8 miles northwest on Trillium Gap Trail to reach the Roaring Fork Road, which I paralleled for another 1.7 miles before reaching my car. And this all adds up to a cumulative ascent of almost 8,100 feet over a distance of just over 20 miles. I was able during spring break to get away to do another hike in the Smokies. I am at the Rainbow Falls Trailhead. So, uh, very early March, so I'm looking forward to seeing some really cool early spring flowers. Time for us to get going here, so let's get to it. Now, you know that the entire trail is gonna be just like this. Nice, super flat and graveled, right? <laughs> wood twer. Yep. Old Sugarland, so off we go. Okay, I just started my Gaia GPS on my phone. Of course, I do have my Garmin 66i. But I just keep that in expedition mode and use it as a backup in case my phone dies. Plus, you can see I've got that really big 20,000 million lithium ion battery to recharge everything. So it should be good. That is moving. That's fun. Wow. Yet more of the rock walls left over from centuries gone by. Yep, here we go. This is the one we need. Bullhead Trail. So, this is where we turn off Old Sugarlands and on to Bullhead Trail. Heading out this direction. Yeah. There we go. That's where we need to head. I purposely did not focus on how many miles. Because I kind of know. And I really don't want to focus on <laughs> the number right now. As you can see, there are indeed a few examples of trail damage in addition to blowdowns only this one was caused by a blowdown as you no doubt can see over here that always makes it fun you have to in this case i had to go around to the right and it's like a slip and slide down into that chasm but part of what i knew i was getting into oh well back on the trail still on bullhead about three quarters to a mile up I keep talking about all the blowdowns and the damage that's here, and you've seen some of it already. And it's around me all over the place, trees that have fallen. But unlike the 
Baskins Creek and Graveyard Ridge trails that I did about a month ago, the trail crews have been able to get to these and have done a marvelous job of clearing it back out again, at least here at the lower levels. We'll have to check it out further up. But you can see right here, as we're going along, you can see where they've already cut it across. And that's a recent cut. I'm guessing that's within the past couple of weeks. I mean, that is a fresh cut. Wow. Just imagine what a view that would be. If only we had a view. You know, this is probably the last hike we will see until winter where we have no leaves on the trees, be able to see through the branches. A beautiful little uh, fungi there. Gotta love some of the overhanging rocks along the way. It gives such a cool character to the trail. Then off into the misty depths. Here, you can see, for the first time, we're getting to, we finally have blowdowns. We've had a few in the last couple hundred to 300 yards, tenth of a mile, that you could just step right over or walk under. This is the first one they've that we're up high enough where they can't get to it. Well, not yet anyway. We're probably a mile, mile and a half, two miles, something like that. Well, this is kind of cool. You can see it follows the ring pattern all the way around the stump. Well, that was interesting. First, big blowdown that I couldn't even go over it. It doesn't look like much in the picture here, but it's about chest to shoulder high. And I just can't scramble up over that slippery and all that with a pack. And I don't want to take my pack off. So this one I actually had to down hike about 20 feet or so. You can see where it crosses the trail. Believe it or not, that is fairly high. And the two of them together preclude going underneath. So I had to go all the way down. You can see right here. If I can, there we go. I'll put a little red dot by the tree where I had to cross over, then hike up all of that. Back up to the trail. Oh well. Okay, time for a quick break and lunch. Just look at the fog. It is really gives you that ethereal, mystical look and appearance. And it is very, very pretty. However, I wouldn't mind just a touch of variety in the way of some sunshine. This is a rarity. Absolutely delightful. And so unlike about 85% to 90% of all the trails in the Smokies that I've done. Notice that it is smooth and level. I'll take this all the way to camp or to the shelter. Well, as we continue on in this gray day, I have reached something I've been looking forward to for about 0.7 miles. Ever since I heard about it 0.7 miles ago from a couple hikers coming down. This is the Karen. Turns out this cairn is called the Pulpit, and was built in the 1930s by the Civilian Conservation Corps. This is also a good time to comment on the obvious effects of the wildfire from 2016. It was reported that the fire was started on chimney tops by two juveniles, 
and that it burned northward through this area, consuming 11,400 acres in the Smoky Mountains before reaching the edges of Gatlinburg where it was put out. In addition to the tragedy of 14 deaths, the damage from this fire caused a two-year closure of the Bullhead Trail, only reopening in late 2018. And here we have one of the many small creeks, rivulets, whatever you want to call it, that cross the trail, turning the trail into the creek. It is nice, though, against the mystical setting with just a hint of sun trying to peek out. Well, this is kind of nice. This is the first actual non-fog weather since I started the hike. It's not bad at all. You get some of the strangest fungi in the Smokies, but they're awfully cool. I'm not entirely sure, but it kind of looks like a, a rock tripe of some kind. Maybe the smooth rock tripe. You keep thinking, around that next curve, it's going to level out and it's going to be gorgeous and beautiful, clear vistas. Kind of like that. How about that? And look at these rock formations beside the trail. <laughs> that is so cool. Oh, finally. I have the first downhill. I'm up upwards of, oh, 50, 758, 100 feet, something like that. It's, I'll look at it again momentarily. But this is the first time on the Bullhead Trail where I've reached the ridge line and I'm actually getting to go downhill. Unfortunately, or fortunately, depending on how you look at it, the fog has come in again, which is still kind of cool. I mean, you can just imagine anything beyond the reach of your vision and the next turn. The unknown, the possibilities. It's just, it's a very cool look. 1.3 miles to go. So, looks like I won't have too much night hiking at all. <laughs> if I'm really lucky, I'm able to get to the shelter, put my stuff down, and whip on out to Myrtle Point to get sunset. That way I won't have to do sunrise. <laughs> I can put that towards something else, maybe. Okay, onward we go. I do believe it is sign time. All right, let's see what this one on the right says first. Okay, Mount Lacan, six miles, 0.6 miles, sorry, it's much, much better. And this one going down is the Rainbow Falls Trail, so 0.6 to Mount Lacan, and maybe 10th beyond that to the shelter. All right, we have come the four tenths or five tenths, whatever it is. Yeah, and that's that means we're getting close to our shelter. So let's get the point one done. Might even have some daylight to play with. Oh, that's oh, that's the Alum Cave Trail, Alum Cave Bluff. This is the one that I've come up before. Okay, enough excuses here, time to get going. There we are. 
That is the scene, the entrance to, I believe that's the cafeteria section or dining hall, whatever you call it. We've seen in so many hiking videos for people who come up here and had the, the blessing of being able to stay up here. What a, what a cool opportunity. So, it's closed. It opens in mid-March, so probably next week. As far as I can tell, there's nothing against my walking down here and filming a little bit of it. Here's some of the cabins. He's so many hiking videos by so many people have dem demonstrated those. It is it is just awesome. Oh. And much as I want to, I'm going to head straight on to my shelter, which is about a tenth of a mile. So I'll be right back. All right, we will leave the lodge and head back up to the trail. Okay, at this point, I guess it turns into a boulevard trail heading this direction, which is where we need to go for the shelter. This is point two, but I thought I saw it through the trees here, so hopefully they are over. Oh, wow. That is interesting. Okay, that's for the lodge, I'm assuming. Two giant tanks. There we go. That's what we're looking for. Now there was uh, at least one or two other people registered, so I imagine if they're not here, they might be soon. You can see where the, uh, the bear cables are over there. And I'll take a look here on these higher elevation ones. They sometimes will, during the winter, put the tarp there. Yep, we got both people here already, so they're just out taking a walk. Okay, I'll set my stuff down and go out to Myrtle Point. There's where we're heading. Out to Myrtle Point. Famous in many a video. The Karens here are marking the highest point on LeConte. At least that's what my GPS was showing me. There we go. Obviously, I couldn't pass by without participating in the tradition. Okay. Well, I better book it on over. To Myrtle Point if I can make it for sundown. Yep, Myrtle Point. Point two that way. So let's go. Myrtle Point turned out to be one of the most beautiful vistas of the entire trip, with the stout conifers looking stoic, almost defiant against the wind and the clouds washing over them, like an ethereal stream, its flow the very definition of graceful elegance, its intensity relentless.
Met a couple guys there who came down from Ohio to enjoy the sunset there at Myrtle Point. They even offered to take my picture. I wish it were possible for the camera to fully capture this, because it was truly a beautiful sunset. Well, I'm not sure how well that sunset time lapse went from yesterday, first time I've tried it. I should probably have done a longer recording, but I think it went pretty well. Uh, it's just after 7 in the morning. Uh, here at the LeConte shelter, as you can see, met two really nice campers that were up here as well. Um, really, really good people. But now I'm ready to leave my 6,400 feet place of repose and head on down. I'm going to hit the cliff tops here, see kind of the last bit of sunrise, and then come back and then head on down. That well, I've covered everything up here. It's beautiful. It is beautiful. I love this spruce fir forest. Well, time to go. Yep, there we are, cliff tops. Not very far. I could have been out here a little earlier, but my guess is that it's heavily fog and shrouded. And I decided to have breakfast first. see if you'll hear me over the wind noise this place has had some harsh conditions to deal with as I walk onto the cliff tops I look onto a world of endless gray bottomless abyss. I am struck not only by the wind but also by the trees themselves. Their stout stature giving the impression of the grit and determination of the immovable object refusing to yield and millimeter to the irresistible force of the relentless wind. When faced with seemingly insurmountable challenges or hardships, that is the kind of strength and steadfastness that I want to embody. How fortunate we are that our Creator has provided such incredible illustrations like this in nature for us to be encouraged. Okay, here we are coming down from cliff tops. It has been one big stone gully much deeper than this and much more bouldery but it's a trail and I think you'll recognize from yesterday where we're coming out <laughs> we are heading back to the shelter And I thought while I was here, I would show you the, hmm, the remaining accommodations for necessities. They have what well, just, I believe every shelter will have these nice uh, privies. Well, back here, I'm going to pick up my backpack and head on down. I'm here at the LeConte Lodge, and 
I just finished talking to Wildcat and his wife Becky. They came out when I dropped by the, as you can see, I'm right here at the lodge. They came out to say hi. And very nice, really nice people. Um, the park is fortunate to have individuals like that to take care of the place over the winter. I just got to thinking he is one fortunate person. He gets to be here watching out, looking out after the place all winter long. The tanks we saw the other day, uh, those are actually water tank. They pump it up using a solar powered pump up into those tanks. So you've got gravity fed water whenever you need. They have uh, just a beautiful setup here. Really can't say enough. Really nice people. That was kind of them to come out and talk with me. So we are now hitting that same trail that was hitting up. This takes you right back up to where the trillium gap trail to the where the water is yeah see here's your just perfect 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 look at that right here and you can see As you can see, one of the things I love about this Kingdom Bee Free is the really high filter rate you can get out of it. I mean, it's just pouring the water. But you need to remember to soak the filter the night before your trip to get that good flow rate. Okay, so this is, I'm assuming, okay, that's for the horses coming up here. You, you tie them up there and then go on up to the lodge itself. Okay, that makes sense. You know, I haven't used the wireless mic yet, not once. The mics on this Pocket 3 that are built in are so good that unless you're some distance from the unit from the pocket three no need one of the cool things about coming early in the season is that you get to see stuff left over from winter well this isn't such a great example but you can with finally being able to see down off the side here. I think this is a northeasterly direction off of Trillium Gap Trail. We're only about maybe quarter mile, half a mile from the lodge. And look at this. Ice left over. That's a chunk of ice. As we come down here, more ice. get to see some additional that, that is cool that just looks like a like a waterfall frozen in time that is awesome all right time to enjoy even more awesomeness oh now that is cool when the sun comes out filtering through the trees bright in the foreground the dark mountain behind it
We're still pretty high up, but this looks like a yellow birch. As you may have guessed, the Kant Lodge is entirely supplied by llamas that pack the material up. The Trillium Gap Trail, about three times a week. So, at first I was surprised, but then I, I guess it's not entirely unexpected. It's a saddle, obviously, and a riding blanket. I guess with all the wear and tear they put on it, that eventually some of them aren't going to make it to the top. The saddle has seen better days. Oh well, continuing on. We are almost to Trillium Gap itself. Also up at the lodge, when I was talking to Wildcat, he mentioned that the trail crew had just been through and cleared and cut away all the downfall that had landed on the trail for Trillium Gap. So I am immensely grateful for that. There we go. You can see those are some very fresh cuts over here. Much, much appreciated. Wow, you can smell that fresh resinous scent. You can see a very fresh cut and lots and lots of sawdust. So, love that fresh resinous scent though. And even more, I love not having to climb over and under while wearing a backpack. Here's a beautiful little waterfall. Part of the uh, stream that we encountered early on. This one comes down into South Fork or something like that. I'll probably dub that in later. But I'm about eight tenths of a mile from Trillium Gap. And that is really pretty, isn't it? Right up in front of us is Surrey Fork that it joins later on. Uh, maybe a quarter mile down the hill. But it does make such beautiful, beautiful scenery. I love these little, um, I was going to say handrails, but I think I'll call them ankle rails. Very interesting. Uh, I'm guessing they it helps people, but maybe also for helping the animals stay where they're supposed to. Like the llamas when they come up. I'm not sure, but it looks, looks really nice. Hey, first uh, dog hobble that I remember seeing. We're down just a little bit below 5,000 feet. So we're like 48, 4,900, probably 4,900. Okay, we've got a fair bit of wind now, so I'm using the wireless mic with noise reduction to see if that helps. Wow, did it help. You can hardly hear anything, and the wind was blowing pretty hard. In any case, I love that uh, last little bit of the trail approaching um, <laughs> Trim Gap. is kind of opens up a little bit. You'll see right here, it is nice and tree. You can tell when the leaves are on the trees, it's going to be really pretty. And a little more full, but a little more spacious feeling. And of course, up here. Okay, we have come 3.6 miles from LeConte. So we're going to do that now 
get that under our belt. Let's head on up. I was hoping for a nice smooth trail, but it has turned into one of these boulder ravines that they just put the name trail onto it. As you can see, it isn't exactly pleasant. Uh, by the same token, it isn't exactly impassable, but when you're really tired, it makes you very appreciative for the straight and level trails. Okay, we're gonna put the noise canceling on the wireless mic to the test here. It might surprise you to learn there's a little wind up here. This is Bushy Mountain. That I'm standing on, as in the view from Brushy Mountain. As you can see, it is somewhat socked in, but we made it, and now we get to go back down. At this point, I was explaining that after coming back down to Trillium Gap, I decided to head east on Brushy Mountain Trail for about 0.7 miles to see some really pretty little waterfalls and some other gorgeous views before returning the 0.7 miles back up to Trillium Gap. The Trillium Gap, where we were earlier. So now we really are headed down Trillium Gap. 2.8 miles to hit Roaring Fork and then the trail parallels that for a while. All right, time to have some fun. Okay, we have deer up ahead of us. One just crossed the trail, and another one's still there. <laughs> Boy, she is just giving me her best attention, isn't she? Now she's going to mosey on. And, uh, it's too bad it wasn't this open earlier when you were higher up, but that's all right. It's still beautiful either way. Love those cool craggy rock faces right alongside the trail. Grotto Falls is one of the most iconic waterfalls in the Great Smoky Mountains National Park. As you can see, the trail takes you right behind the waterfalls itself. Grotto Falls is also one of the most visited waterfalls in the National Park, which is easy to understand. It is really beautiful. Oh, here's another deer. Oh, I'm sorry, there's another. Hi there. And another. Wow, there's quite a few of you, aren't there? Huh, something tells me they're not terribly afraid of people. Well, we're gonna head on the Trillium Gap 
I knew we were getting close and we're just about to hit it. In fact, you can see the, the road. Normally that would mean, hey, I'm back. I've, I've finished it. I've successfully completed the hike. Now it just means that I've got about another mile of trail that's right up against the road. That's all right, it's still a trail, so we'll, we'll hike it and we will enjoy the beauties that are down here. Well, well, looks like we have ourselves some more spring flowers. Look at that, we got ourselves another flower. You will notice when I said the road is right next to the trail, literally about 20 feet. Finally, finally, I have reached the end of the Trillium Gap Trail. And there we are. Well, we've reached the end of yet another successful adventure in the Great Smoky Mountains National Park. This park is a treasure. It is absolutely incredible. If you know anyone who enjoys backpacking, please share this with them. I would be wonderful to have more people out here that appreciate what God has given us. As always, I thank you for allowing me to share with you yet another of my Sylvan Reflections. See you in the next one. If you like this video, please consider clicking the like, subscribe, and notification bell.